mute everybody's line on the conference call. Okay. All right. Good. All right, Mom. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition, and I am your host and teacher, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E Church. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. And as always, I believe it is a day to praise the Lord. Praise your holy name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let us go now to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful and beautiful day. We thank you for allowing us to, to just be here with you and you be here with us. We thank you, Lord, that you touched us one more time this morning and woke us up, clothed in our right minds with a reasonable portion of health and strength. We thank you for all the provisions that you have provided for us, dear Lord. We thank you, Lord. We've got a roof over our head, clothes on our backs, food on our table, shoes on our feet. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for the, the, what it, all that you have done and are doing, dear Lord, and are going to do in the future. You're God and you're God all by yourself, and we give you all the praise. We plead now the blood of Jesus over this conference call and over Facebook, dear Lord. We plead your blood over this technology, and we just ask you, Lord, as you uh, be with us this day, as you promised, where two or three are gathered in your name, that you would be in the midst, that you anoint us afresh like never before, that your lesson might go out clearly without any error, and that it might be received and give someone encouragement, strength, and even get someone to give their lives to you, O oh God. We thank you for this and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Again, welcome everybody um, to the Guiding Light Ministry. Uh, our Sunday school lesson for this day comes from two passages of scriptures. Uh, Numbers chapter 25, Numbers chapter 25, verses 10 through 13. And then uh, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 30 and 36. Again, Numbers chapter 25, verses 10 through 13. And then uh, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 30 through 36. Uh, the title of today's lesson um, is Do the Right Thing. Do the Right Thing. And um, uh, subtitles, Faithful God and Unfaithful People. Hallelujah. So so let's begin our reading. And um, I, I've been been going through this and reading it over and over and listening to, to the recordings of, of the reading. And uh, I, I'm, I'm going to go with the uh, New Living Translation this morning totally because it's, it reads and flows so much better. Um, um, and uh, so the New Living Translation starting at Numbers chapter 25 verse 10 reads, Then the Lord said to Moses, um, Phineas son of Eleazar and grandson of Aaron the priest has turned my anger away from the Israelites by being a zealous among them as I was. So I stopped destroying all Israel as I had intended to do in my zealous anger. Now then tell him that I am making my special covenant of peace with him. In this covenant, I gave him and his descendants a permanent right to the priesthood, for in his zeal for me, his God, he purified the people of Israel, making them right with me. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That, that, that's where I get that do the right thing from. Amen. Now, now let's go to uh, 
1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 2, starting at verse 30. 1 Samuel chapter 2, starting at verse 30. Therefore, um, the Lord, the God of Israel says, I promise that your branch of the tribe of Levi will always be my priest, but I will honor those who honor me. I will despise those who think lightly of me. The time has come when I will put an end to your family. So it will no longer serve as my priest. All the members of your family will die before their time. None will reach old age. You will watch with envy as I pour out prosperity on the people of Israel. But no member of your family will ever live out their days. The few not cut off from serving at my altar will survive, but only so they, their eyes can go blind and their hearts break as their children will die a violent death. And to prove that what I, what I have said will come true, I will cause your two sons, uh, Hufnan and uh, Phineas, to die on the same day. Then I will raise up a faithful priest who will serve me and do what I desire. I established his family. I will establish his family and they will be priests to my anointed kings forever. Then all of your surviving family will bow down before him, begging for money and food. Please, they, they will say, give us jobs among the priests so we will have enough to eat. Amen, amen, amen. As I said, the title of this lesson is Do, Do the Right Thing. Do the Right Thing. Um, and the subtitle is Faithful God and an Unfaithful People. Our memory verse comes from uh, 2 Samuel chapter 2, verse 35. And he says, I will raise up a faithful priest that shall do according to that which is in my in my heart or it is in my heart and in my mind. Amen. Amen. Our key concept for this lesson is our obedience to God shows our faithfulness to him. Our obedience to God shows our faithfulness to him. That that reminds me of the uh, the old song, Trust and Obey, for there's no other way to be happy with Jesus but to trust and obey. Our message for children, um, keys for kids, if you will, is God wants us always to be faithful in our service to him. He wants us always to be faithful in our service to him. Amen. So as we break this lesson down, our lesson facts, uh, to understand how God responds differently to two priestly ministries of the son of uh, Eleazar and the sons of Eli. And then our biblical uh, principle to grab a hold to is to know that God has a clear consequence for unfaithfulness. And then the daily application we want to look at in this lesson is to identify and, uh, to, and correct unfaithfulness and unkept commitments in our own lives. Amen. So we're going to break this lesson down into two parts. The, the first one, we're going to talk about God's rewards for faithfulness. Uh, and then the second part, we're going to talk about God's punishment for, for unfaithfulness. Um, this, 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 this lesson, as, as I was studying it and planning for it, 
it kind of threw me for a loop because I was like, okay, Lord, why why you got these two two together? Why why couldn't you just do one or the other? <laughs> and um, and I believe what what he really wanted when he was leading those who put the Sunday school lessons together, he he was leading them to show this contrast, and this contrast is between two 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 people named Phineas, if you will. The first Phineas the first. Is is Eleazar's son, a uh, grandson? Uh, uh, Eleazar was uh, Aaron's son. Or am I saying no? Wait, this was Eleazar's son and Aaron's grandson. Yeah, I got it right. I got it right. Thank you, Lord. And 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 this this is the time of the children of Israel uh, in in the wilderness. And they're, they're at Shechem at this point. They, they are very close to the promised land. And, and the children of Israel uh, got caught up. They got caught up. They got caught up in idolatry. Um, what they were doing, um, they, they, they had gotten in with the uh, Moabite women. Um, and, and the Moabite women had seduced them. Uh, some have said that even uh, the reason that they, they tried to or they were doing this seduction of the children of Israel was that uh, that, that prophet uh, 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 Balak uh, told them to, to, to the best way to get, to, to get into the Israelites and defeat them is to get them to be compromised. And uh, so here it is, the Israelites are, are, are now are now sleeping, the Israelite men are now sleeping with the Moabite women. They're going to, to their, their temples, the Moabite temples, they're worshiping and all of this. And in the midst of all of this, God told them, say, no, I'm a jealous God. And he put a plague on them. And during that plague, some 24,000 people died. But while this plague was going on, um, Moses took a stand. He took a stand and um, and uh, in the midst of him taking a stand for what God told him to do, and he told all the priests that that we got to destroy all of these folks because if they don't, if we don't destroy all these folks that's going to the Moabite camps and all of that, then we're going to be in bad situation. So this Phineas, this Phineas number one, number one, he 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 saw uh, an Israelite uh, named uh, Zimri. And, and Zimri had brought a Moabite woman named uh, Kazbai into the camp, into the tent. And, 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 and while all the rest of the Israelites were mourning because of this plague that came upon them and they were weeping and crying, he took this woman into the camp in the sight of the whole congregation of the children of Israel. And, and so here it is, here it is. He then goes in, Phineas 1, and he takes a spear and he kills both uh, Kazbai and he kills uh, Zimri. And so when he did this, that's when the Lord spoke about him. And we're going to come back to that in a minute. That, that's that's the, his reward for being faithful. We're going to come back to that in a minute. Now I want to paint the picture of Phineas 2. In the because see I want to set the stage so we'll know we got two different uh, finishes we're dealing with uh, and uh, and um, so so that you know we won't be confused. So the second Phineas is is now Eli's son, and Eli had two. Eli was prophet. Eli was a priest. Eli was a judge. Um, he was the one that took in Samuel. Uh, and, 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 and had the conversation with Samuel's mama, Hannah, and sat, and Hannah devoted, uh, 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 um, uh, Samuel to, 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 uh, to the Lord and gave him Eli to, to raise up. But Eli had two bad sons, Phineas and, um, um, uh, Hufnan. And, and, and these two, br uh, brothers, these two sons of Eli were priests, but they were taking advantage of the priesthood, and and they were going around uh, just 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 being real bad. And so here it is. We're going to talk about these two different uh, uh, finishes and and their 
one being faithful and one being unfaithful. Now, now let me let me paint some pictures here. You know, we know that um, if you ask people 20, 30, 40 years ago, statistics say that um, uh, those who are in the ministry, those who are priests, those who are a clergy were were uh, had people had very high regards to them. Uh, two out of three people would say that that a priest is an honest person, that a, a, a preacher, a minister uh, is a good person. But but now, but nowadays that's all changed. Why did it change? It changed because we went through this period where it, we were finding out that the Catholic priests were were going around. Uh, 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 molesting the children and, and and that came out and and then people began to have a lack of trust for people women and men of God and so 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 we live it in that time where where statistically people do not trust the women and men of God especially with their children and we're just going to say have mercy God have mercy and and so we we who are in the ministry we who 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 follow after the Lord God? We got to do the right thing. We we cause see, I, they, if we don't do the right thing, there is collateral damage. Other people are affected by the things that we do. When we do right, they're affected by. It. When we do wrong, they are affected by. It. And our job is to do the right thing. So let's let's now let's now. Uh, I, I gave you a little background of, of, of both of the uh, uh, finances, and that, that's going to be our background So as we get into this text. So we're going to begin reading again. Uh, we're going to look at our first part, uh, uh, Numbers chapter 25, verse 10. And it says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Phineas, son of Eleazar, and grandson of Aaron the priest, has turned my anger away from the Israelites by being as zealous among them as I was. So I stopped destroying all Israel, all Israel as I intended to do with my zealous anger. Now tell him that I am, am, am making my special covenant of peace with him. In this, in this covenant, I, I'll give him and his descendants a permanent right to the priesthood. For in his zeal for me, his God, he purified the people of Israel, making them right with me. Phineas' response to the sinfulness of, 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 of Zim, uh, Zimra and, and Kozbar, uh, through extreme demonstration of this fierce protection of God's holiness was in line with the punishment God had already delivered. Priests were set apart for God's service, offering sacrifice, leading in worship, modeling holiness, and, and representing his people. And Phineas took action. He took action and, and, and revealed his zeal, his courage, and his faithfulness, and his commitment. Yes, all the essential qualities of a good priest. And these qualities were in stark contrast to the community of the Israelites who were just drenched in sin. And so, when he took action, even though this action would seem like, oh man, that's so hard. That's so hard of an action to, to, to take the lives of two people like that. But, but he was doing it by, his, by the leadership of God, and, 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 and he had a zeal for God. And, and there's a zeal for God that, that is a good zeal. And then there's a zeal that, that, that is not based on the righteousness of God. It's not based on anything but, but one's own inner zeal. And so this zeal was there, and he and he did this. So, but he had a he got a reward for it. God rewarded him. The reward for his faithfulness was in threefold. First of all, the plague stopped. Oh, hallelujah! If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, I'll hear from heaven, and I will. 
forgive them and heal the land. And so God stopped the plague. Secondly, the sins of the people were forgiven and they were made right with God. Oh, hallelujah. That, that was the reward. And then the third reward that God made. He promised that God that God made uh, to Aaron that he, there would be everlasting priesthood would be carried through his grandson, Phineas, his descendant, as opposed to any of his other grandsons. So his faithfulness, Phineas's faithfulness, ended up giving him a reward. And so I say to us, our faithfulness definitely has rewards. Uh, today, today, today is, is, is what well, would be the Sunday. Uh, it, uh, it was actually, the date was November 4th, 27 years ago. I accepted my calling into the ministry. And, and I've tried to be as faithful as I possibly could. And, 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 and I believe there are rewards that God gives to each of us for being faithful to the ministry that he's called us to. Sometimes those rewards are, 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 are right in, the, in our presence. Uh, we, we, we see God blessing us and anointing us and favoring us over and over again. And then we know that we got rewards coming when we get to heaven. So God rewards our faithfulness if we do the right thing. Now, let's get to the second part of our lesson. The second part of our lesson is, 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 is in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 30 to 30, uh, 30 to 36. And uh, I'm going to read it again from the New Living Translation. Therefore the Lord, the God of Israel, said, I promise that your branch of the tribe of Levi will always be my priests. But I will honor those who honor me. And I will despise those who think lightly of me. The time is coming when I will put an end to your family. So it will no longer serve as my priest. All the members of your family will die before the time. None will reach old age. You will watch with envy as I pour out prosperity on the people of Israel, but no member of your family will ever live out their days. The few not cut off from serving at my altar will survive, but only so their eyes can go blind and their hearts break and their children will die a violent death. And to prove that I will, what I have said will come true, I will cause your two sons, Hifnon and Phineas, to die on the same day. Then I will raise up a faithful priest who will serve me and do what I desire. I will establish his family and they will be priests to my anointed kings forever. Then all the surviving families will bow before him begging for money and food. Please, they will say, give us jobs among the priests so we will, will have enough to eat. So in contrast to, to, to Phineas 1 over in Numbers who was faithful we, and, and received the reward, now we see God's judgment on the sins of Phineas 2 and his brother Hufni. And who were enabled, if you will, by their father, Eli. So an unnamed man of God came to Eli and explained to him that God is judging his son's sin. And Eli's own indulgence and lack of discipline 
Eli did talk to his sons and he asked them questions and told them, said, why y'all doing this? Why, why y'all going and, 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 and taking the, the best meat from the sacrifice? That, that's not what we're supposed to do. Why are y'all sleeping with all of the women who come to, 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 to worship God? Why are y'all doing this? But he did not discipline them. He, he just didn't, he was old and he, he didn't have a heart to, to lay down the hammer on them and discipline them. Oh, mercy. And so, God, at this point, was so upset that these two priests, Huthnan and Finney, were taking advantage of the children of Israel and the priesthood. And so, they weren't even repenting. They, they, they were just out of control. They were not doing the right thing. And so, This messenger for God told them, not only would they die, but generations to come will face additional penalties as repercussions for their sins. So now Eli's priestly line would be cut off. And furthermore, very few men in the family would live to see old age, dying in the prime of their life. And those who survive would be filled with grief, struggling to eat and live and beg for opportunities to serve and support themselves. Sometimes our unfaithfulness to God not only affects us, but it also affects others who we're connected with. So this, this is a very hard lesson. This is a very hard lesson. And, and, and when you see a lesson like this, you say, well, Lord, I, I, I can't end a lesson on, on bad news. I, I just, it just, it, it's, it's a hard lesson. But, but I can't end it on bad news. God, I just, Tell me, help me understand, you know, the good side of this. And he says in verse 35, he says, Then I will raise up a faithful priest who will serve me and do what I desire. And I will establish his family and they will be my priests to my anointed kings forever. Yeah, I think there's the good news. God always has a ram in the bush. God always has a remnant. You and I may be that ram in the bush for our generation. In their time, their ram in the bush was Samuel. Samuel had been, been trained up to be a good priest. And God, let him become the new priest. But not only was this to speak of Samuel, it was also to speak about Jesus, who is our high priest. And he always does the right thing. Yeah, that's the glory of God in doing the right thing. He always rewards us when we do the right thing. And he rewarded us with Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. This is one of those lessons, like I said, that, that, that seems very, very heavy-handed. But, but at the same time, we need to know that our faithfulness has rewards and our unfaithfulness has sins. So we need to do the right thing. Amen. 
points to ponder. We must realize that our response to God's faithfulness to us is to be faithful to him. Because God is always faithful. God rewards those who are faithful to his covenant. And he punishes those who are unfaithful. Let us be aware of our continual need to examine ourselves in this regard and repent. The word of God over in 1 John says, God is faithful and just. It says that if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. This is to say there are times when we will sin. But if we repent, confess and repent, God is faithful. And we must always trust that. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy with Jesus but to trust and obey. So let's do the right thing. Let's trust him. Let's obey him. Let's be faithful. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, forgive us the sins of our faithfulness to our priestly covenant and responsibility. Help us, Lord. Grant us hearts for keeping our commitment to you. And wait, may, may we, by your grace, continue to count and be counted in the community as people of commitment to your will and your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Before I end the recording, I always like to pray the prayer of salvation. So please pray with me. Dear Father God, Come confessing Jesus Christ. Believe it in my heart that he died on the cross for my sins and that you raised him from the dead. Please, Lord, forgive us. Forgive me of all of my sins and come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Please, Lord, send your Holy Spirit to help me always to do the right thing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer and truly believe it in your heart, you are now saved. And God is with you. God is in you. And he will help you every step of the way. Be blessed.